In this video, I'm going to walk through how to do uh, custom partitions with Power BI incremental refresh uh, without using Tabular Editor. Uh, so you can use this to set up weekly partitions or any size you want, or even some other applications that I'll, that I'll talk about. Uh, this is not a technique that many people will need, um, but it's come up a few times when I've helped customers. And it's something I've been thinking about off and on for, for months. So I thought I'd just uh, make a video so I could share it for anyone else that needs it in the future. So, so what am I talking about? Um, and so I listed here at the top some example applications. So say, you know, out of the box, you get in the service monthly uh, days, partition, quarter, year, of course. Um, but say you wanted to come up with some different size partitions. Say you want once a week, every 10 days, whatever you want to define. Uh, you had some alternate time logic, you know, month is a little bit too big. So I want to do half months um, or I have an odd calendar, uh, like a fiscal calendar, and I want to have a partition exactly match my fiscal periods, week, month, quarter, whatever. Um, and this technique that I'll show you, I won't uh, do an example today, but you could also use it with non-date based uh, partitions as well uh, with uh, column uh, value text filters, for example, without having to use time of their editor. Uh, so um, a reminder to go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you find these videos useful um, and put in the comments if this is a video you'd like me to make. Uh, so, so how do you do, uh, do this? I'm going to walk through it in a minute, but basically it involves several things. Um, as always, I like to do some, some end trickery uh, in the incremental refresh space. Um, this, you're going to set up incremental refresh as usual, but you're only going to use days but the days that you use actually have nothing to do with the date ranges uh, in there. Uh, and, you know, one day equals one partition, basically. And you set it up as usual for how many partitions you want to keep and how many you want to refresh. Uh, the other key thing that you need is the ability to refresh the data set with an effective date other than today. And there's several ways you can do that. Uh, you know, really, you need to dynamically calculate a value um, but then you could do that refresh, you know, with a Timsel script, you could do a custom connector and power automate, but that needs like, you know, an app registration and secrets and all that kind of stuff. Um, the simplest way I found and the way I'm going to show today is to just use a fabric notebook um, with a semantic link. Um, and so before I jump into it, just high level, uh, how does this work? You know, again, basically each day is, is a partition. Um, and you take that input for that partition, that range start, and you define the range that you need in your M code. Um, the effective date is basically a way for you to figure out which partition number you're in, like what today's date is currently in, uh, and that tells you what uh, effective date you need. Um, you use the range start that is provided to you from the service uh, to calculate the desired date range which you then pass on and that folds back to your source to filter the data to that date range. And then basically the trick to this is while you're in a given period, you refresh the data every day with the same effective date um, for the duration of that period. So if you've got a 10 day partition, you would refresh every day for 10 days with the same effective date before you would move to the next effective date. Uh, and then the old partition would drop off and a new partition would be created. Okay. All right. So before we jump into the M code, let's jump over to the service. And I mentioned that doing this with the semantic link in a fabric notebook is the easiest way to do this. And so I've, I'm going to walk through all of this eventually, but first I'm just going to do these first three uh, cells here. Um, so one, you need to install semantic link and a reminder, I'm not a Python expert. So uh, please forgive any silly things I do in Python. Um, the next thing uh, you're going to need is you're going to import um, the senpai.fabric uh, as fabric from that. Uh, and then a useful thing while you're learning py uh, Python is to use this help function. And so I did, you know, we're going to use the refresh data set function. So if I show the output, it gives you a lot of good information about all the you know, the syntax that you need, what data types go for each parameter um, and with a nice description for each. And in our case, um, we don't need all of these. You know, basically we're gonna apply the refresh policy. We're gonna provide a dynamically generated effective date. Uh, and, I, and I think that's it. 
Okay, so I'll hide that back again. And then basically this is the syntax that you need. So this is, you know, these three lines are really all you need to refresh a Power BI data set and provide any of those parameters that I just talked about uh, that go with this, this function. Um, so you got your data set name, not even the, the ID numbers, just the, the names themselves. Um, in this case, I'm doing a full refresh. Um, this is actually the default value, so probably don't need this, this term in here. But I do need to say I'm doing a refresh policy um, and I need to provide the effective date as a date time value. Okay, and we'll come back and, and talk about these in a second. So if I jump over to the Power Query side, um, before, before I do that, if I look at my data tables, I've got three different examples here, but all three of them have exactly the same incremental refresh policy set up. I'm going to keep six days, in this case, six partitions of data, and I'm only going to refresh the latest partition. Right, so all three of these tables are identical. So if I jump over to the query editor, um, just like any model with incremental refresh, you need to have range start and range end. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna show you three, three different examples. So in this case, uh, this is custom size partitions, this is weekly partitions. So basically, with all three of these approaches, you need to come up with a, with a reference date. And then both your dynamically generated effective date in your notebook, as well as here, uh, use that same uh, relative date, reference date. And turns out January 1st of this year was a Sunday, so it worked out well for weekly partitions. So I, I use that. Um, and then here I defined how big I want my partition to be. I want this one to be weekly. And then I subtract um, the input, the range start, which is what's given to you from the service to from that reference date. Um, and in this case, I've set the range start to be the 10th of January. Um, and so I subtract that, I get nine. It turns out you have to use the range end in here somewhere. Uh, otherwise it won't let you uh, publish this with incremental refresh. So while this step is not even used, I need to have range end somewhere in the query but then I'm gonna dynamically calculate my start date. So I'm basically just adding days from the reference date. Um, I've calculated what, you know, uh, that nine from before, uh, the period number, and then my partition size is seven. So it pushes me out uh, that many days. The end days is the same, but uh, it, I'm going an extra uh, partition size minus one to get that week. So the fifth to the 11th and from here, this is where you would use your start date and end date values in the filter for your data source. For this demo, all I'm doing is using the start and end dates in a date list, converting that to a table. So I've got one row for every uh, date. Um, but again, this would be your filtered data from a source, from example. And then I just added an index and I added a um, step here just to capture what that range start value is so that when I publish this to the service, I can quickly show in a table um, all my range start values for each partition and the date range that they uh, include. So I'll, I'll show you that in a bit. Okay. All right. So that's the custom size. Again, I could change that to be 10, 15 days, whatever. This one is a half month uh, one. So again, this one uses the reference date, same, calculates the same period number, but then you just come up with the logic that you need to, to basically get, uh, you know, 10 half months in, right? Um, so 10 half months should be the second half of the fifth month. So we got, you know, uh, May 16th here, May 31st. Um, and then I've got the, the same stuff here where I'm just uh, creating one row for every, every day within that date range. But again, at this step, you would use these start dates and end dates in your filter step when you're querying your source, those would fold back to your source and you'd only bring in the, the dates for this particular partition. All right, so those are, you know, dynamically calculated dates, uh, but you can also do some other, some custom things as well. So let's say I work in a company with a fiscal calendar and, you know, this is my typical 445 uh, date, 
table, which I have another video and blog about. Um, but I'm just using that here as, as an example where I can put in, you know, the fiscal period. And then this is a four, four, five. So, you know, the first one is four weeks, four weeks, five weeks. Uh, and I've got those. And I'm actually not using this. I did this just to generate those and then copied those into this hard coded table where I just did enter data and copied those values in. Um, and um, then I can use that in this step here, where again, I get to the period number and then I can filter that hard coded table with um, which, which row of that table I wanted and I wanted the 10th one. And so that turns out to be between October 1st and October 28th is the 10th uh, fiscal um, month there. And then again, I'm using those values as my start and end date. Again, I would pass those as filters to my source, some database. Um, but in this case, I'm just doing all the same stuff and I end up with uh, one row for every uh, day. All right. So now we're going to go over to the notebook side. And one thing I needed for this last example was I needed to, you know, basically you need the corresponding logic to go from, hey, what's today? And then figure out uh, what effective date you need to get the date range you want in your Power Query. And so for this last one, I needed to hard code those values uh, for my fiscal months. Um, inside Python as well. And so, um, again, not knowing Python as well, I found the needed syntax online and actually used Power Query to uh, generate the text string that I needed in my Python notebook that I'll show you in a second. All right, so if I go back to the notebooks, this first notebook is for the custom size partitions. And again, you need to bring in the date, the libraries that you need, um, I'm grabbing, you know, what's today's date? I use that same January 1st, 23 reference date. Days between, I define that same partition size. So if I defined it as 10 in the query side, I would need 10 here. And um, then basically divide that by, divide those numbers, the days between and the partition size, round that down basically with the floor function, and then go from the reference date and add that many uh, days uh, to that date. Um, and then I would use the refresh data set. I have it commented out just because it's useful to just return just this effective date here um, from a um, troubleshooting standpoint. And if I look here, the effective date that it calculates is uh, February 21st, um, which if you do the math makes uh, works out well. Uh, this is the last week in December of 2023. Um, so uh, in the 52nd week, basically, uh, of the year. So that works out. And so it would refresh the data set using this date time value as the effective date. All right, for the half month one, similar type of thing. I, I mean, I won't go through all the code, but basically figured out the Python code I would need to figure out which half month of the year um, today's date is. And today's the... 29th of December. So I'm in the um, 24th half month of the year, the second half of the 12th month. Um, so January 24th looks correct. Um, and again, when I refresh the data set uh, using this, you wouldn't use all three of these in the same data set. Uh, but in for a model that was based on using half months, January 24th would get me this month. Uh, and then the previous five partitions would be archived or half months. All right, same thing uh, with the fiscal periods. Again, import the needed libraries. I've hard coded the same exact um, date ranges for all of my fiscal months um, in this table, and then basically filter that data table for where the start and end date, where today is between the start and end date, and then I grab the, the, the fiscal period value from that, and then add that to my reference date. And then again, I get, um, in this case, uh, January 12th of 23, which actually, uh, if you go back to the, the query, the hard-coded table there, that 12th row there 
um, is actually the, the range that include today's date. So all these are returning the right effective dates. Again, you would not do all three of these approaches in the same model. I'm just doing that for convenience. Um, and then if you publish that model to the service, and if I go back to the service and look at the, just a simple report that I made, uh, once this is published and refreshed, this is the one uh, with the seven day partitions. You can see, so each one of these values, remember each partition is just has a column that has the range start for that partition there. So I've got um, my partitions here and every one, um, you know, this latest one is the one that's refreshed every day. Uh, and then, you know, this includes the 29th, which is today's date. So that seems to be working correctly. Um, the thing I forgot to mention too, is with the, with the notebook, sorry about that. Um, you can also go up here on, and run and you can schedule this notebook. And so this is how you would set this notebook up to run every day. You'd install the uh, semantic link and then run the relevant code for whichever data set and approach that you decided to use. And then one last thing, if I show uh, with SSMS, to that same thing with that published model, um, I can look at what the partitions are, are called when they're refreshed and how big they are. And this is the table with the weekly partitions. So you can see here, um, there's the latest partition and then there's the six archive partitions before that. Um, they all have seven rows. Again, there's one row for every date value. Um, and when I first published this and refreshed it, they all had this uh, same time. And then I've since refreshed it again. And of course, only the latest partition gets refreshed. Uh, and so that's why it has a different date time value. Okay, so uh, I'll share this PBIX uh, in the link in the comments, uh, as well as a text file that has the um, notebook uh, code as well. And if you're one of the few people that needs this approach, uh, hopefully this will be helpful to you. Thanks.